In the case of Oklahoma, Nebraska, you had a real contrast. You had Barry Switzer, this bootlegger's son, his own book title. He's funny, he's charismatic, really good looking, he's out there, he's a swashbuckler. Tom Osborne is your antimatter. He could not be more different, he could not be less swashbuckling. In each of his first five seasons as head coach at Nebraska, Tom Osborne's team won at least nine games. But Osborne had yet to beat that troublesome neighbor to the south, Oklahoma. And it was getting to the point where um, people were getting pretty restless, and I realized that if we didn't beat them pretty soon, I wouldn't want to be here much longer. Winning isn't everything, but here in Nebraska, we rate it right up there with oxygen. Those first five seasons, Tom's winning nine games and he's getting to a bowl game, but people are looking at it and saying, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's all well and good, but Oklahoma, Nebraska's not beating Oklahoma, and that's a problem. Osborne solved that problem in 1978, upsetting. Barry Switzer's number one ranked Sooners, 17 to 14. When that happened, it certainly led to a certain degree of acceptance here. Not total, but some. Beating Oklahoma soothed some critics, but in his first decade as head coach, Tom Osborne's teams never finished higher than third in the national poll. In 1983, that streak seemed likely to change. Nebraska's number one, beginning to end. It's the scoring explosion team. Behind Heisman Trophy winning Ibach Mike Rozier, the Cornhuskers finished undefeated, ranked number one, and earned an invite to the Orange Bowl, where they would face the hometown Miami Hurricanes. He's on stage, this is his moment, and here comes Howard Stoneberger in a helicopter, falling out of the sky on the media day, uh, stealing the stage, uh, playing to the home crowd, getting the city of Miami worked up. He throws to Dennison. Touchdown, Miami! Playing on their home field, the Hurricanes streaked to a 17 to nothing lead, forcing Osborne to resort to trickery. Forever known in Husker lore as the Fumble Ruski. Heading to the end zone and very close to it was Dean Steinkohler. He's in for a touchdown. Dean Steinkohler, number 71. He hands it to old Dean. The ball, he didn't hold it, he left it right on the ground. Dean Steinkohler's touchdown started a Cornhusker rally. Late in the fourth quarter, Miami missed the field goal, giving Nebraska possession trailing by seven points. Irving Fryer! And as soon as Nebraska gets the ball the last time, they would have had to score a touchdown and a two-pointer to, 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 to win the game. A touchdown and a one-pointer to tie the game. There's no overtimes back then. Facing fourth and eight with less than a minute left from the Miami 24-yard line, Tom Osborne called an option run. Touchdown, Nebraska! Jeff Smith's touchdown made the score 31 to 30. And Osborne faced a decision that nobody in Nebraska will ever forget. In his mind, a tie was a loss. He could have settled for a tie and perhaps still won the national championship. But he was willing to risk something that the world would call greater for something that he called greater, and that is to be the very best you can at that particular moment. We were Tom. You know, what he was thinking, we were thinking. There was never any doubt in our minds that we were going for two. I had a vote in the polls and I knew that I would not vote for a, a coach that settled for a tie. That was my mindset. And uh, and so I didn't really even think about it. I just thought, well, we got to win the game. This is for the national championship for Nebraska. Incomplete. Did not take the easy way out. The state lives for Nebraska football. They need this. They don't want it. They need this. You got your chance, and instead of backing down, you say, let's mash it down. He'd never say that. He just did it. He's the least flashy person in college football, and that was a Clint Eastwood moment. He was willing to make that decision and was willing to, to live with the consequences, regardless of what the fans thought or the media thought or anybody else thought. And he just couldn't understand why people didn't understand that that's what you do when you play football. You go for the win. So if he had to do it a hundred times over, he'd do the same thing. 